Welcome into Bruins Now. I'm Rachel Holt. Get ready to grow out those playoff beards. The Bruins regular season ends in just a few short days. You can relax in the meantime. The Bees have locked up a playoff spot and home ice advantage. And as good as things are for the team as a whole, we have to start by talking about one player specifically, Brad Marchand. The Bees forward reaching two pretty remarkable milestones. One, scoring the most shorthanded goals in franchise history. Two, reaching 100 points in a season for the first time in his career. So far this season, he's tallied 36 goals and 64, yes, 64 assists. He's the first Bruin player to reach the 100-point mark since Joe Thornton did it back in the 2002-2003 season. Hockey players, they don't always love being singled out for individual accomplishments, but Marshawn's teammates and Bruce Cassidy were more than happy to talk about the star forward. You know, he was a young kid when I first uh, when he first came up through Providence, and he works as hard as anybody in the National Hockey League. So, uh, you know, trust me, if there's a coach, uh, a player that I'm proud of right now, it's Brad Marshawn. He's really, really worked hard at his game. Uh, I've learned some chirps along the way. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. But well, not really. But uh, <laughs> uh, um, no, obviously a lot. Anytime you have a hundred point producer on, on your team, it's pretty special. And um, the things that I take away are kind of his off ice habits. Actually, to be honest with you, he's he's an amazing player on the ice. He um, he sees things that other guys don't see. But off his ice, his preparation, and him and Bergie and all the leaders here, um, pretty similar in that. And um, I think it's something that as young guys you want to be like them. And they won Stanley Cup for a reason. And, uh, you know, credit to him. It was a pretty special milestone, and uh, it was cool to be a part of. And Zdeno Char with a shout out on Insta, writing, "Congratulations to my brother Brad Marchand on a 100-point season and scoring the most short-handed goals in franchise history." Marshy certainly doing a lot of scoring, but he's not the only one. Check out the point totals for the past few games. Maybe not the outcome that we had hoped for in every game, but you do gotta love to see the scoring from guys like Nola Chari on Saturday, David Backus and Jake DeBrusque on Sunday, a number of different players tallying assists, and look at all the guys getting in on the fun on Tuesday. DeBrusque with two, Marcus Johansson getting his first goal as a Bruin, and Carson Coleman lighting the lamp. He now has three goals and five points in nine games for the Bees. And as much as they're scoring, five goals from one player in a game is a little much to ask for, no? Even if it is the team's leading scorer, David Pasternak. Can we just call out this parent that clearly didn't want to buy a puppy? That ain't right. They'll take all the scoring they can get when they face the Toronto Maple Leafs in the playoffs. No easy first round opponent. This is the second year in a row the two teams meet in the first round. Here's how things went in 2018. The Bees got up three games to one before the Leafs evened up the series. It came down to a Game 7, which the Bees won. They met back in 2013, too, once again with the Bees going up three games to one, once again to Game 7, this time to an overtime even. Same outcome, Bees winning Game 7. Looking at this year's stats, the Bruins have the upper hand on Toronto, going 3-1 and one in their regular season showdowns. Worth noting, those Game 7s last year and in 2013 happened at TD Garden. The Bees will have home ice advantage again. Always a good thing, especially when you have fans like the Bruins fans. At the Garden this year, the Bees were 2-0 against Toronto and beat them pretty soundly with a combined score of 11-4. The playoff schedule will be released at 10 a.m. on Sunday morning on the NHL Network. Just two more games to get through until then. Here's what's on deck for the next couple of days. Thursday night's opponent was in the running for the wild card, but not anymore. So not much on the line against the Wild, but the Bees will be facing former Bruin Ryan Donato, who was traded to Minnesota back in February. So Alex Kramer asked the forward, which former teammate is he most excited to see? Oh, I don't <laughs> want to offend anybody. Some guys might be insulted. Uh, I mean, I haven't seen Grizzly. Grizzly's one of my uh, close friends, and uh, there's a lot of guys. I mean, all that, all the young guys, Charlie, uh, Brando, uh, <laughs> Hino, there's a bunch of guys. That, I mean, I, I don't want to not name anybody, but I mean, there's, the list can go on and on. I think I'm pretty excited to see everybody. After that, one final game at TD Garden on Saturday against the Lightning. Tampa Bay has by far the best record in the league with 124 points. So with a lot working for the Bees, we'd like to remind them now is not the time to mess with a good thing like Tuka Rask in goal or David Pasternak scoring goals. But Pasto wanted to try out his goaltending skills in the locker room. The best part about this is Tuka Rask's face. Yep. Here's a close up. Hashtag unimpressed. That will do it for this episode. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.